To access the content for this lecture, go to apmonitor.com and select the process control course. And you'll see information in lecture number 10. That's the worksheet that we're going to be using to create dynamic models from uh, energy, material, and species mold balances. So this is a little worksheet that guides you through uh, creating those. And if you go to class 12, you'll also see a procedure for developing first principles models and so how to develop a transient model nine steps there okay and then if you want to go back to homework number five you'll see some code examples for our CSTR and also a problem description here's our problem description for the CSTR that we're going to be simulating today and then if you go ahead and download the Excel and Simulink files you just go ahead and save those and then you'll open up Simulink 1 CSTR sim.slx you'll open up the MATLAB interface. So the thing that you're going to be able to do is is go ahead and um, you can be able to control the jacket temperature on this and when you simulate it you'll be able to see in the top you'll see a plot of the temperature and then also of the concentration. And the objective here is to stay within temperature bounds while lowering the concentration of A to as low as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the temperature of the jacket. You can see my reactor temperature increasing. If you increase it too much, I'll have a temperature run away. Okay, so there my temperature ran away, uh, which was undesirable. And we're going to go ahead and model this reactor. What I'm going to do is, is go ahead and go through these different steps right here. First of all, we identify our objective. What's our objective in this case for this CSTR? Okay, yeah, so to try to describe concentration coming out of the reactor, okay? So using a mole balance, okay, so that's, first of all, our objective. Um, okay, so this is our dynamic uh, balance for uh, moles, okay? So for moles, and we're going to, um, our objective is going to uh, be write an equation um, to describe concentration of A coming out of this out of this reactor. Okay, so let's go ahead and now just draw our diagram. You guys already have it here, but we have our feed. What's the symbol I use for the feed concentration? Uh, is it CAF? Okay, CAF, and then the feed or the uh, coming out is CA. Okay, now it's energy balance. Do we need an energy balance to be able to solve this? Okay, let's go ahead and derive it and then figure out if we need anything from the energy balance or if we can just solve this equation independently of the energy balance. Okay, so we have, um, and then we also have some assumptions. Okay, so what are our, our assumptions here? Did somebody say steady state? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no steady state. Okay, maybe steady state for the volume in the reactor. Okay, so the volume doesn't change in the reactor. Um, but for the concentration, um, that doesn't change. That is going to change with time. Okay, so we can't just assume steady state. We leave the uh, if we assume steady state, then the accumulation term would go away. Okay, um, so assumptions. Um, I'm going to write that one volume um, is constant. Okay, so we have good level control there. Okay, so let's say I have a uh, level transmitter, uh, level controller. And then the uh, maybe a valve here that's that's controlling that, and that's controlled very well, so the level doesn't change in that reactor. Okay, so volume is constant. Okay, any other assumptions you guys want to make with this reactor, Logan? Okay, well mixed. Okay, good. Okay, so what does that mean? The CA. Okay, good. So CA in the reactor um, equals CA out. Okay, good. Okay, so that's another assumption. Any other assumptions you guys want to make? First order reaction. Okay, first order reaction. Okay, first order uh, reaction. Okay, any others that you guys can think of? Okay, so yeah, you have a cooling jacket here, and then that's maintained at temperature, uh, you know, of the of the cooling. But that's going to change, right? You guys did a homework problem where you were able to change that value and try to control the concentration and temperature in the reactor. Okay, so that one may vary, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next step now. What is the next step in developing our uh, our energy balance, or our, uh, our balances? Okay, spatial dependence, does this have any spatial dependence? 
no spatial dependence, so it's going to be an ODE. Uh, now let's go ahead and write our balance. Okay, so here's our balance equation. I always like to just start with, um, there you go. So this is going to be in and out and then plus n dot uh, generation minus n dot consumption. Okay, and then I can just fill in those terms. All right, and you'll do the same thing with mass as well. Just be m dot and dm dt. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and figure out what n a n dot a n is. Okay, so what is that going to be in this case? Okay, so we know that n equals um, c a times what volume? Okay, so that's going to go. Uh, right up there and then we have n a n and what is that going to equal? Okay so that's going to be uh, c a feed times what's the uh, q? Okay q is the volumetric flow rate. Okay you could also put v dot there as well if you wanted to put that. Okay and then what is the n a out? Okay, so CA times Q. Okay, and then what about generation or consumption? Which one are you going to have there? Generation. You're going to have consumption, right? Because you're reacting from A to B, um, and A is going to be consumed. Could you also write the species balance for B as well? Okay, you could. You could write one of the two. Would you need both of those? Not necessarily. Okay, not necessarily because you'd know that. Um, that, uh, well, you'd have to relate A to B in terms of concentration. Okay, so um, generation, it's an irreversible reaction, and so we just have the consumption rate. Okay, so N A consumption, and what is that going to equal? Okay, so this is going to be my reaction rate of A times the volume, and then I've got another equation now, which is now reaction rate of A equals what? Yeah, so you have the K naught EXP negative E over RT. Okay, so you have all of these equations that you can just substitute back up into this main balance equation if you want, or you could just keep them separate. Okay, but now you have your dynamic mole balance for A. Okay, so um, Let's see, is there anything else we need on this one, or are we done? Okay. Um, with the reaction term, don't we need to be times that by concentration? Very good. Yeah, we do need concentration in there. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah, so we need, it's a first order reaction. You also need concentration in there. This would constitute a K value. Okay, K times CA. Okay, good. Good catch on that. Well, you've defined it as consumption, so that when you plug it in here, this is going to be a negative sign right here. But yeah, you definitely want to make sure that you have the sign right, um, so it's it's consuming it, so it's going to the accumulation is going to go down if you're consuming it faster. Okay, if you're consuming that. Okay, good. Um, let's go ahead and do the um, energy balance now. Okay, so we have our energy balance that we want to write um, on this. We want to write our envelope first. Where's our envelope where we want to have our accumulation in and out? Okay. This is, this is going to be an important part because we have our jacket now as well. Yeah, so it's going to be right, yeah, right on the inside um, of the jacket. That's our envelope. Just that part of the reactor. So anything uh, going in or out of that control volume is going to be included in this. So is it? So let's, let's go ahead and start with our objective first of all. Um, we want to have an objective for this model. What's the objective that we want for this equation? Energy okay, it's an energy balance. What's what's the objective? What are we trying to write an equation to be able to predict? Okay, the temperature coming into the reactor or, or out of the reactor or within the reactor. Okay, so in the reactor and out, okay, if you say it's, it's well mixed. Okay, so we drew a schematic, uh, we labeled all the variables. Um, let's go ahead and list our assumptions. Okay, so what are our assumptions in this case? 
What's that? Okay, so constant um, C sub P. Okay, good. Okay, so CSTR, but no um, shaft work, okay, from the mixing. Okay, or negligible compared to the heat of reaction, other. Okay, adiabatic. Okay. Okay, so um, adiabatic, uh, well insulated, um, except for the cooling jacket portion where, where you'd want heat transfer. Okay, good. Um, any other assumptions that you guys want to mention in this case? Just assume that the mixture CP is the same as the A pure Okay, so the C sub P, um, A for A and B, it's the same. Okay. Okay, any others that you guys had to make um, in deriving this? Okay, constant density. Constant density, anything else? Okay, well mixed. Okay, just like our, our previously w previous one. Well mixed. Any others? Ideal heat transfer. Okay, so, um, yeah, so ideal. Um, so what do you mean by ideal heat transfer? Are you just saying like the UA uh, delta T? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, so you have an overall heat transfer coefficient that describes the transfer of heat into or out of the reactor. Okay? Constant volume. Okay, yeah, so constant volume. Again, our level control is working well. Okay, so these are our assumptions. And now we want to, um, let's go back to this list, uh, determine the spatial dependence. Is there spatial dependence of temperature? No. Okay, so what does that allow us to s assume? Yeah, so, the, so Erica got it right. Uh, the temperature of the reactor, okay, is equal to the temperature coming out, okay? Okay, good. So um, anything else that we need? Um, you know, so we'll, we'll go ahead and write our dynamic balances and then see any other relationships that we need here. Okay, so I'm just going to start with what I also have up here on the board. I'm just going to write it in terms of enthalpy. Okay, in minus H out, uh, plus H generation, minus H consumption. Okay, so um, what is H? Okay, yeah, so H equals M C sub P and then T minus T reference. Okay, you gotta have a reference temperature. When you plug that into your differential, what happens to that reference temperature? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it's going to remain constant, so the differential with respect to time for that reference temperature will be zero. So I can write, um, you know, my dH dt um, is going to be uh, equal to m c sub p. We're going to assume those are constant, and then dt dt. Okay, so that's going to be this top term uh, right up there. Okay, and then what about my h? In what is that going to be? <coughs> CP. Okay, and then we have uh, T in minus T ref. Okay, and then what about out? M dot C C P T out minus T ref. Okay, so um, when I combine those two. Um, then I can just do H in minus H out. What's going to happen to the T ref in that case? And then when I combine those two, I have H in minus H out. That's going to be M dot C sub P and then T in minus T out. And the H ref is just going to go away. Okay, so this part right here, I can just put right up there in the uh, H in, H out area. And then what about generation or consumption? How, do we need one or the other term? We need both of them. Somebody said both of them. Okay. So uh, what is my H generation? Okay, that's going to be my heat of reaction, delta H of reaction, and then times what? The rate. Okay. So I have R A. What else do I need there? Okay, and then volume. Good. Okay, so the volume. And then what about my H consumption? 
Okay, so UA and then delta T. So let me write out the, the temperature and the te temperature of the cooling jacket. What do, so what do I need to do? So, so I have a, a negative sign up here already. Okay, so we want this term to be positive. Okay, so it's going to be T. Okay, great. And if I had a positive sign up here, then I would just write that TC minus T. Okay, but you want to make sure that you think about should this be a negative term, negative quantity, or a, a positive quantity. Okay, so I put all those together, and then I have my energy balance. We now implement these transient equations into a model predictive controller that's going to optimize the jacket temperature to achieve a certain set point in the reactor. And you can see it increases in the blue. It increases the temperature of the jacket, then decreases it as the temperature starts to rise and then levels out at a certain value. No temperature runaway. It was able to control the temperature in the reactor and minimize the concentration. Visit apmonitor.com for more material on process systems engineering.